Hey everybody, welcome to Hold the Mic. We are your hosts, Ryan and Ian. Brother, how are you doing? What up, doe man? Hey, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing yeah, all right. I'm a little hungover. I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna tell you lie. right now. I uh, <laughs> I got up first thing this morning, and I said we gotta we gotta work out. Whatever we uh, put in, gotta get it out of our system. Yeah, see, I I just continue to put other things in my system, so. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it going. Just keep it going. Keep it, you know, just keep the over. process going. Roll it over. Yeah, roll I over remember minute. why I don't drink now? Because uh, yeah, my head, my head's been hurting all day. Oh my god! I told I'm Jen, I you. said this is this is why you know I don't do it. Yeah. It just um, as we get older, it's you know it it's hits not, harder. It hits yes, it so does. much harder, bro. The bounce back does it. But on that note, I just wanted to thank you for filling our one black position here at Shed Media. We're proud. Uh, of you to be here to strong um, black jobs man strong black jobs. you know just like to I balance say. things out you know what i'm saying just <laughs> meeting quotas you yeah know what we, I mean? we we appreciate you it checking the D, box for us a dei hire and uh you know i really wasn't the most uh um uh adequate shit were you know? the dei hire i, I, I knew i knew we picked man. the wrong one you Damn know it. So, so reality is <laughs> we picked uh, the wrong black guy. <laughs> I'm in the system, and uh, you know, hopefully nobody crosses the border and takes my job. Oh, sweet baby Jesus! Uh, yeah, that was. Um, <laughs> well, we're gonna get to that. Before we get to that, though, I just want to say this is our last show uh, for Pride Month. So, yeah. just wanted to uh, throw. And we're leading last... into the weekend. Happy Pride, man! It's yep. a big weekend. Big ha- yep. deal. Happy Pride, going into the Fourth of July, Independence Day. Love it. Um, it's also the end of Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. And so I just wanted to end that as we always do with if you or someone you love is having a mental health crisis, please dial 988. That is our 911. It's a number just for us that if we're struggling, then hopefully they'll get us the resources we need. And it is supposed to be safer than dialing 911. So 988, put it in your phone, remember it, memorize it, share it with people. And uh, remember that men struggle too. All right, you got anything? No, man. That's it's you know that's happy pride. Happy, yes. you know, it's, it's I'm just glad everybody's getting the help they need. If if you yep. please reach out, but it's more so. Uh, you know, Rob told me do not call him. He will not be available for this weekend. And I was like, understandably live, so. Live your best life. Understandably <laughs> so. so. Shout so out to Robbie. We need Big you to come back to on Big the bro. show. Big shout yeah. out. So he's gonna have a good weekend, man. So I'll get I'll get the photos at some point. You For know? sure. One of those kind for of sure. situations. So um, I get the good ones. Yeah. Speaking of, thank you so much for dropping what I sent you into the family group chat. Oh, I had to do that. <laughs> you know, he's gay, but you know, it's classical music. Oh it's- my god. So because I, I I don't know I what had- made me think to do it. You know, want to know? I'm going to tell you how it happened. Well, no, I'm going to I'm going to tell you when we get off the show how it happened. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. A, but, speculation over here. Yeah, all I can but, say is all I can say is there's a group chat I'm, of uh, yeah, I'm not a rat. All the siblings. And, so, uh, do you know what happened? He posted. I, th- I think on, it was I think it was Shanita. She she freaking uh, texted me. She's like, just wanted to you know give you the chef's kiss on that <laughs> meme you did. <laughs> Oh man, this is how you know you it's in the family affair. Oh my you, and you I literally asked her, I said, Did he really drop that in the family group chat? She texted me back, she's like, You're damn right, he did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, I, I go, this is way like I didn't even ask for permission. I go, this is way too oh. good not to share. And you wanna know what I the go, funny thing was is I sent it and I thought, Oh, maybe you didn't think it was funny because like you didn't you didn't like reply to it, you just liked the the comment. So I was like, Oh, maybe he just didn't think that was funny. And I and I moved on. Dying laughing. So I, was so I woke up to the text from your sister, and I was like, oh, okay. That it spread was... like wildfire. And it's every, every, <laughs> everybody, like, I actually, I'm going to take a, a, a screenshot of everybody's reactions because it's hilarious how they're like, he loves classical music. Like, it's just like, it's hilarious. Oh, my God. Things, and William so Defoe good. is just, oh. I love William Defoe to begin Amazing. with. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, um, I should I should have put it up for you guys, I, I but I didn't share it anywhere, so I can't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was just a personal thing. It's just so good. But, um. Yeah, away from the personal stuff, let's get to what everybody wants to hear us talk about. If you missed yesterday, Ian and I were on live while the debate was going on. We had a few drinks. Man, we had uh, 8,000 people with us. If you missed it, you were at the wrong party. I'm telling you Yeah, we're up to 11,000 right now on on Twitter. Welcome. Yeah, man, we're getting up to 200 on YouTube. So, Um, yeah, thanks to everybody who came and hung out with us last night. But um, I think after today... Seeing all of the uh, reactions, um, we have quite a bit to talk about here. Yeah. So my yeah. first question to you is, I just want to know what you personally thought overall 
about the debate when it was said and done? I think it's uh, I think it's two things can be true. Uh, I think we watched our grandfather literally sit there and try to hit us with statistics and data and actual information. And then we watched him combat with a, uh, a narcissist liar, you know, yeah. and, and, and and let's just be serious. He's a habitual liar. It just it, he threw so many things out there and I rewatched it. I actually rewatched it. So that's that's how much torture I put myself through. I rewatched it where that, I that I, is torture. I watched how Trump would never give a solid answer. And it was like, perfect example. There's 18, 19, 20. Like, it's like, he's just throwing numbers out. A thousand people coming in here and this is what they're doing. And it's just like, you're not actually giving us anything. You didn't really touch on anything about your own. You know, I, I guess if I was to sit there and be like, wow, he really grew from his last uh, presidency. It would have been him saying, you know, I made some mistakes and I've really learned from those. And I, I would have been shocked if he would have actually came out with that kind of like, um, bombastic kind of like mojo of like, you know what? I'm a grown ass man. And that's why I'm going to, I'm going to stand on my own too. Instead, it was, it was really just him complaining about, you know, how he was wronged once again. Um, you know, I, I give him credit for not uh, interrupting as much as I thought he would. Uh, that, that started to tail off at the tail at the very end of it. You started them started to speak over each yeah, other. They both, yeah. They both started doing they it. They started yeah. to both too, but that's, that's where uh, Biden got his mojo was as, as he progressed through. He, he, he but, started that. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Not so, me. so the thing that I got from it was that you know, s- sluggish. He's he is not a good uh, speaker, being Biden. Um, he's eighty years old. What do you expect from this man? Like, it's you're literally putting this old man on stage, and you're like, perform. And it's not yeah, it's not dance. who he is. Tap dance, and it's like, he's, and he's always, never been that, by the way. He's never been that. Like, do you remember? Do you remember back when he was the vice president, and we used to make fun. Of oh they let the Joe time. they let Joe Biden out again he you know he had a gaffe like this right. isn't new Joe right. this has always been Joe Biden and and look and I I know the talk is that he had a cold I mean I get it but it, it's it's still Joe he has a stutter he has a speech impediment that's who he is some people are not good at that Trump and I give him all the credit Trump is a showman he is he has the gift of gab you got to give him credit for that that's that's his his strong suit yeah. is improv on on set. Make shit up, throw it against the wall, see what lands. But then go Run read it as a transcript. But you know what's interesting? When you actually read the transcript of last night, the transcript, if I could say the word, if you actually read it, um, Biden really had some solid points. He did. Like if you actually go through and just d- just remove the, the showmanship of CNN. Yeah, remove the nonsense. Just read what he actually had to say. And you're like, Versus what deep. Trump was saying. Some of it was deep. It Some was. of it was deep. It was, it was, you're talking about an 80 year old man trying to literally remember data and, and then spew it and, and give it to the American people to digest. And so, yeah, there's going to be fumbles there. On if a time had, clock. On a time clock. Two minutes, one minute rebuttal. Here yep. you go. So it's like, okay, so he's trying to literally go through it. And there's a, there's a scene of you and I talking where we're like, what the, what the hell are they talking about? Like, what was, what was the question? And then here comes Biden. Literally, the question. coming back in as a rebuttal, talks about the question. You and I both had this moment like, oh, my God, that was the question. Well, well, he, well he rebutted what Trump said and then circled back around to still answer to the, what question. the question. was. And that and was like, there, oh, okay. His yeah. cognitive, his cognizance, it's, it's all there. Everything about it. I said, I'm not questioning is his mind there. Everything I have said to you for the past year being with you on the show, Joe Biden is dangerous behind closed doors yes period i don't care about a stage i don't think we needed a debate we know who these two people are yes i i don't need to see them talk to each other i I just i'm not interested in that um but you know what i enjoyed a cocktail with you and it was it was a fun evening it was you know we made it a good time um so yeah i mean i agree with most of what you said It, it was it was tough to watch you know i think just me you know me i try to be fair you know, the first couple of questions were rough for, for Joe. And uh, I think like most of us, we were sitting here going, oh, crap. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like I wanted this. St- I wanted the State of the Union, Joe. You know, like I wanted that Joe to show up. <laughs> it's hit and, or miss, man. It's and, hit or miss. And, and, and I don't know if I really buy the cold thing. I really do. The first impression I got when he got up wow. there was they overprepped him. Yeah. They overprepped yeah, him. His voice that. was hoarse. Because they overprepped them, and they be, it's like cramming for a test, right? right? 
You guys, you know, and I'm some people cram for tests and they do really well. I never did. And the more I crammed, it was like the more I second guessed myself. Yeah. And that was what I saw happening a little bit was like him, like almost just he couldn't. He was second guessing himself, trying to make sure he got the right point. And, and the whole time, like you said, you're on a time clock. And he also knows that every word that comes out of his mouth is going to be scrutinized. Right. So you also have that you know, behind yeah. you. I'm the worst test taker. I don't care how, yeah, uh, me too. how, you know, educated I come off as or whatever. You put me in front of a multiple choice test and, and it's timed. Forget it. Well, it was, you, know, forget it, it. It, you know, it's one of the reasons I did so well in the military. Like, yeah, we had tests to rank up and stuff, which were difficult. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, the reason I did so well is because I could do the job, right. you know, and the way I learned how to do that, like, yeah, you learn the basics when you're going through the school, but you really learn when you're out on the job, you know, the, on the job training. That's where I learned 95% of, of what I did as, as in the military, as a, right. a contractor. Like, I, I'm very hands-on. Show, you show me you, it one time, and I've, I'm probably going to get it. You and when make you me look try to it, memorize it off of a page, right? and I'm going to struggle. When you look at that, exactly what you just said about learning on the job, when you look at on the job and you see that Trump learned on the job of being president and that the entire cast, practically, of his cabinet – will not support him. Yes. That should tell America what's really happening. That's not even political. That is Republicans who have worked with this person. They're like, we do not yes. endorse him, and we are not returning for that fun, that, that shit show that happened at the White House. Yep. So, you know, it's quite interesting. And, and you talking about how Joe uh, came today, or I mean um, uh, yesterday, look at him in North Carolina today. Yep. It's night and day what yep. he gave. And it was like, where was that Joe yesterday? Because he was, he was doing it. But at the same time, okay, he didn't deliver... Uh, again, the showmanship, but if you read the actual transcript of what he said, some hard hitting stuff in there. And that's why I couldn't, I couldn't stand, you know, CNN and, and all the political pundits, you know, turning on Biden the way they, they did today. Immediately, immediately. That, like it, that was, I, we didn't even finish our show and everybody nope. in the comments was talking about it. Yep. And we took a poll in the show and majority of the people yes. in that show chimed in they said biden won that one people were really paying attention and there were and, and, and a lot of people and the same people that said that were also being critical of him in the comment section yes, saying oh come on yes, joe were. like yeah like you know i think it's important for us not to sit here and and cheer you know cheer today like joe biden didn't have a few gaffes of his own because he did right. right you know and that's one of the reasons why the pundits are all go, you know running around with their hair on fire today but the reality is, it's just like anything. Let's be, let's step back, take the emotions out of it for a yeah. second, and ask yourself as a human being: Have you ever been put on the spot, whether it be for a test, a, a speech in front of people, whatever it is? Have you ever been put on the spot and bombed, and knew that you were capable of doing better? Yeah, yeah. It's and it's you know what's really kind of telling about this too is that you look at the standards that they were being held at. Biden had to prove that he's not old. He's old. What What are we trying to do yeah, here? He's 80. Four years ago, we knew he was going to be 80 now, right? Yep. Like, we knew this was coming. So I don't I don't even know why we're being shocked that an 80-year-old is acting like an 80-year-old. Like, let's just be serious right now. When you look at the standards, though, of what he had to – you can't fumble. You can't stumble your words. You got to be this. You got to be more presidential. You got to be – all this stuff. What did they say to Trump? Don't be an asshole. Yeah. Try. Look at the bar <laughs> that was really there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that was that was the bar. So, you know what? Biden did Biden. He tried yeah. to do a lot more statistics. I wish he would have just bullshitted through some of it. You know what I mean? It looked like, and we always talk about this: the kid who didn't read the book and tried to do a book report versus the kid who did do it. Yeah. One sounded boring, and this is what the book is about, and blah blah blah. And one was like, "I'm gonna make some shit up." It's like there was unicorns and spaceships. It's like you clearly didn't read the book, man. You, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but all right, here we go. So yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say both of our favorite line from from the, the debate was Biden saying that Trump had the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> my man's 1950 disses are living rent free in my head, man. Bro, I'm sorry. bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When he hit him with that one, I was just like. <laughs> he said, you you slept with a porn star while your wife was pregnant. You, you, you're, you literally <laughs> are, are getting getting caught for being uh, molesting women, right? And he, he damn near said rape. He yep. damn near said it. He almost and did. He's like, he's like, you're a felon. And I, I'm just sitting here like, this is a real conversation about who's going to lead this lead this country. Yep. Here we are. The 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 felon or 
or whatever. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> But, but I yes, think it's important Alicat, to, and, Alicat was everything. Uh, and I and I just want to drive home the point that Trump, you know, you've watched it a second time, so I'm only going off my first go here. But it, Trump failed to, to answer, I would say, ninety percent of the questions in any in any kind of reasonable or or uh, understandable way. Ninety percent of his argument on that stage was about that border, and yes. we knew that was coming. Yes, we he demanded it from his party and to squash a Republican bill so he could run on that platform. Yeah. And, and he did not disappoint. He used every chance. What would you like to do about child care? Well, you know, the border. And it's like, <laughs> OK, well, what about the black community? The border. And it's like uh, they're stealing all your jobs. Ukraine. Well, our border. And it's like, here we go. We every single one of them. He tried to put it in there as his and, and it wasn't landing. Because it felt very forced. It was. And and cue um, all of the Republican representatives going on the record, on video, saying that they were told to tank yeah. any border bills that were put up by Joe Biden or the Democratic Party so that Donald Trump had something to run on. No, but and, they say... And we watched last night exactly why they wanted yeah. that because it's literally the only thing he has he had yeah. no answer to hey you're a thir- you're a 34 time convicted felon you know and then the the part that really stuck out to me though was when they asked him the very direct question of what do you say to the american people who are concerned that you may orchestrate another january 6th type event and he answered that the same way he always did, which was basically stand back and stand by. Yeah. And yeah. and that really stuck out to me because it's like, oh, he's, well, as long as it's fair. And every, every time he said that, I'm like, according to who, though? According to you? Because you think every time you lose, it's not fair. And every time right. you win, it's above reproach. And it was really it was really quite telling because it was all the top Republicans who were there saying this was a fair election. This is the fairest election we've had. And and on top of that, uh, you know, there's an ad happening in Pennsylvania that the Democrats put all they they literally have spliced all of the the times that he said that mail in voting is 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 fraudulent and that it's not you know it's it's the worst this and the third and so now uh, Trump has switched gears and now he really believes in mail in voting. Well, they're using all those clips from back in 2019, 2020 of him uh, spewing all of this rhetoric, and yeah. uh, now they're trying to hit. Uh, the Democrats with a cease and desist letter. So yep. it's it's quite telling. I, I guess people don't realize the shit you say, you and I, the shit we say on these mics, it's going to be on the internet forever. So, you know, re- reality is, like, if you don't step correct, it's going to be thrown back in your face. And, and a cease and desist letter, you're coming off soft like Drake. That's all I'm saying. You're giving mm, like BBL that. Drizzy energy. You 69 God. <laughs> <laughs> Stay your ass home. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Um... So I hope you'll indulge me for a second and allow me to go through a couple of tweets that I've put out over the years. Let's do um, it. I like the, memory lane. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, and I think you'll see why I, I think it, it's relevant to the show today. Okay. So hopefully, uh, hopefully when we're done, you all will agree. But um, let me pull it up here. Uh, how do I share again? So, if anybody wants to pay for a producer for the show, we're more than happy to accept donations. <laughs> I would much rather just be able to snap my finger and make this stuff come up, let me tell you. Well, I will say this to you. Oh, you got it, you got it coming up? Yeah. Um, all right, we'll, we'll jump into some other things, too. Let's see. What, do I like it? I think I... Uh, I don't know if I like that better. All right, I want people to be able to see it a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is a tweet. Now, I just want to remind everybody, this is a tweet that I put out in uh, June 10th of 2020. This was the first, my first viral tweet that I ever had that went over like 1,000 likes. It has 80,000 likes, 53,000 shares, and 6.2,000 comments in how, three years, four years? Four years, wow. All right, so you'll see the reason that this went uh, as viral as it did. Excuse me. I said, uh, an anguished question from a Trump supporter. Why do liberals think Trump supporters are stupid? And I said, here's where the majority of Trump, uh, anti-Trump voters honestly feel about Trump supporters in mass and why. And it just, I went through and showed an article for every single point. And it was, so I literally backed up 
every single point that I made with a verifiable article. I tried very hard to use articles that were as middle as you could find. You know, okay. every every news organization has their bias left or right a little bit, but you know, I, I, I try to stick to the ones that, you know, try to stay somewhat close to center. So the first one was that when you saw a man who had owned a fraudulent university intent on scamming poor people, you thought, fine. But when you saw a man who uh, had made his first business practice to stiff his creditors, you said, okay. That when you heard him proudly brag about his own history of sexual abuse, you said, no problem. That when he made up stories about seeing Muslim Americans in the thousands cheering the destruction of the World Trade Center, you said, not an issue. That when you saw him brag that he could shoot a man on Fifth Avenue and you wouldn't care, you, uh, you exclaimed, he sure knows me. That when you saw him mock the disabled, disabled, you thought it was the funniest thing you ever saw. That when you heard him brag that he doesn't read books, you said, well, who has the time? That when the Central Park Five were compensated, compensated as innocent men convicted of a crime they didn't commit, and he angrily said they should still be in prison, you said, that makes sense. That when you heard him tell his supporters to beat up protesters and that he would hire attorneys, you thought, yes, which he never did, by the way. That when you heard him tell one rally to confiscate a man's coat before throwing him out into the freezing cold, you said, what a great guy. That when you watched the parade of neo-Nazis and white supremacists with whom he curries favor while refusing to condemn outright Nazis, and you have said, thumbs up. That you hear him unable to talk to foreign dignitaries without insulting their countries and demanding that they praise his electoral win, you said, that's the way I want my president to be. That you have watched him remove expertise from all layers of government in favor of people who make money off of eliminating protections in the industries they're supposed to be regulating, you said, what a genius. That you have heard him continue to profit from his businesses in part by leveraging his position as president to the point of overcharging the Secret Service for space in the properties he owns, and you said, that's smart. That you have heard him say that it was difficult to help Puerto Rico because it was in the middle of the water, you said, that makes sense. That you've seen him start fights with every country from Canada to New Zealand while praising Russia and, quote, falling in love with the dictator of North Korea. You said, that's statesmanship. That Trump separated children from their families and put them in cages, managed to lose track of 1,500 kids, has opened a tent city incarceration camp in the desert in Texas, and explains that they're just animals. And you said, okay. That you have witnessed all the corruption and lacking moral character, rudeness, and contempt for you, the working American voter, and you still show up grinning and wearing your MAGA hats and threatening to beat up anybody who says otherwise. What you don't get is that our succumbing to frustration, thinking of you as stupid, may very well be wrong, but it's also charitable. Because if you're not stupid, we must turn to other explanations. So we keep going. Now, this I started adding June 26th to I 20. have to thank you so much for documenting all this because so much <laughs> has happened over the years yeah. that this is a great crash course into this asshole who was in charge. And literally, Biden said the same thing yesterday. Yep. And he said, if you know what this guy is about and you still want to vote for him, well, you let's keep, are. Let's keep going. So That's I, wild. I, I started updating it in June, June 26th of 2021. That when Trump scammed $122 million from everyday Americans for his 2020 campaign, folks who were literally on hospice waiting to pass away, you said Trump 2024. That when Trump added $7.8 trillion, uh, which is actually higher now, uh, but $7.8 trillion to the national debt after promising to lower it, you said he just needs another four years. That when the trade deficit increased by 40% under Trump, you said it would be worse under the Democrats. That when Trump had the worst jobs record since President Hoover, you said four more years. That when Trump said he would be too busy working for the American people to go golfing while doing so for a year of his presidency. I don't think that one's right. But uh, doing so for a year of his presidency on his own properties, you said that's just smart business. That when Trump said everyone would have better and cheaper health care once he was elected while 2.3 million more people became uninsured during his presidency, you said the polling is wrong. That after Trump said it's 15 people and pretty soon it'll be uh, down close to zero COVID case in the United States while 400,000 Americans died from it, you said, uh, who could have predicted? Of course, that was in 2021. Uh, I figured it was time for a little update. Uh, when we found out Trump expressed support for hanging VP Mike Pence during the January 6th Capitol route, you thought he kind of had it coming. 
when Trump uh, said he's financially supporting January 6th defendants and will look very favorably uh, about full pardons if he wins in 2024, you said that's a real leader. When the January 6th committee presented video testimony from ex-attorney General William Barr saying the former president claims of election fraud were bogus, idiotic, and bullshit, you thought the libs are just trying to take Trump down. When you heard that Rudy Giuliani said, we have lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence to support the claims of election fraud, you said Rusty Bowers is a traitor. Um, don't worry, we got more. Because when it was reported that the FBI found top secret documents uh, haphazardly mingled with magazines and clothes at Trump's Mar-a-Lago, you said the libs are just trying to destroy his legacy. When Richard Donahue testified under oath that Trump told him to just say it, the, 20 the, the 2020 election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman, you said he was lying. When Cassidy Hutchinson testified under oath and quoted Donald Trump as saying, I don't fucking care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the fucking uh, uh, magnetometers away. Uh, let my people in. You thought nothing wrong with that. Maybe because when you heard Trump assaulted a Secret Service agent while trying to grab the steering wheel and saying, I am the fucking president, take me up to the Capitol now, uh, you said, see, he wanted to be there with us. The libs stopped him. Maybe it's because when the FBI found a document describing a foreign government's military defenses to include its nuclear capabilities at Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence, you said, it's time to defund the FBI. Another reason might be when Cassidy Hutchinson testified under oath that Trump had thrown his lunch against a wall, leaving a trail of ketchup to be cleaned up. You said she's a liar. He wouldn't do that. How about the time Trump sided with Russian President Vladimir Putin contradicting U.S. intelligence agencies and saying there had been no reason for Russia to meddle in the 2016 election, and you said Trump always tells it like it is. I almost forgot about the time Trump tried to call a January 6th committee witness, urging them to be a team player ahead of their testimony. You said, must have been a wrong number. How about that time Trump defended white nationalist protesters by saying there were some very fine people on both sides, and you said he's defending free speech. It could be because of that time Trump told police not to worry about injuring suspects during his arrest, and you said, yeah, fuck them up. Because after President Donald Trump spent weeks whipping up his supporters with false allegations of fraud during the 2020 election, which culminated with his supporters storming the Capitol on January 6th, you said, this is how freedom is won. It could be that time Trump publicly pressured the DOJ to investigate Hillary Clinton to deflect attention from the probe into alleged ties between the Trump campaign and Russia, and you said, lock her up. When Trump commuted the, and pardoned Steve Bannon, Roger Stone, Elliot Brody, and Albert J. Pirro, just to name a few, uh, you said one about Hunter's laptop. That time peaceful protesters were tear gassed for a photo op of Trump holding a Bible in front of a church, you said, you just hate him because he's a Christian. It could have been the time Trump refused to visit uh, the Asni Marne American Cemetery near Paris in 2018, saying, why would I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers and suckers for getting killed. You said he loves our military. When Trump proudly told the Proud Boys to stand back and stab by, stand by during the live presidential debate, you said, standing by, sir. When Trump spoke uh, on an Antifa sympathizer being killed by federal forces and said, the U.S. Marshals killed him. And I'll tell you something, that's the way it has to be. There has to be retribution. You replied with, as it should be. It has become clear that our concerns were justified. These folks aren't stupid. They are domestic terrorists. Damn. So. Damn. That's a I, lot. I, it, it, it's a lot. And the saddest part is we could add more. Oh, 100%. So. On top of that, here's a tweet I put out uh, yesterday. <clears throat> Donald Trump was the first president in 28 years not to serve a second term, in 45 years not to release his tax returns, in 89 years to lose the presidency, Senate, and House in one term, to be impeached twice, to begin their term with a negative approval rating, to never reach an approval rating above 50%, to ask for and receive election assistance from a known foreign enemy, to refuse conceding after losing, to tell Americans the election he lost was a fraud, to incite an insurrection resulting in hundreds being charged and convicted, to have 81 associates charged with crimes, to lose their security clearance after leaving office, to have their home raided by the FBI for espionage, to be convicted of 34 felonies, to add $8.4 trillion to our national debt in four years, to have zero public service before being elected, 
to be taped detailing how he sexually assaulted women, to have 26 sexual assault allegations, to marry a porn model, to be married three times, to be found liable of sexual abuse, and to be an accused pedophile. Let's see how the final chapter goes. Don't forget that uh, he asked everybody to also inject bleach during a global pandemic. Like I said, the, uh, the sad thing is we can add more to this. Right. Every I just went off for what, three minutes? Uh, a lot longer. <laughs> That's, 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 and we can that's add deep, more. The deep ass list. And it's here's the thing. You have more facts right there than anything this man said last night on a global stage. No, I mean. You literally have the receipts and you just said these are all the things that actually happened. And and if this man would have talked about his own presidency with honesty, he amen. could talk about the mistakes that he actually learned from from his learning on the job you got you have to be able to admit that you made a mistake first to yeah. be able you know you got to have self-awareness and that's the one thing a that, narcissist and that does not don't happen. let me lose this point that's the one thing that that i want people to take from today is that you have one man on one side who would, would refuse to say that he lost the debate the election anything and then what we have on the other side is we have joe biden standing up on a stage and saying you know what i don't really debate well yeah. And I, I like the fact that, you know, he didn't stand on a stage and try to be like, oh, you know, everything was fine. It was great. What are you talking about? He, he knew yeah. and he knows that we all knew. So it was yeah. kind of like I this is a guy that can stand up on a stage in front of the American people and say, you know what? I dropped the ball last night, but let's not lose sight of what's going on here. But let me ask you about that. Yeah. Where's the fact checking? Where's the real time fact checking when you're when you're as a. As your moderator, and I understand that there's a, a element that's on that where it's like, okay, well, we want to be like, we don't want to be just constantly stopping this process and telling you you're wrong. Yeah. But if you're if you're in that, how as a mediator are you not like, well, that's not true. So I, like like if can you I tell look you? At, well, I was gonna say to you, if you look at what happened in Colorado with that mediator who was dealing with a primary with Lauren Lauren Boebert and the whole cast and crew of Republicans. Yeah. That mediator held them accountable with every single fact that was there on the plate. Yes. And I'm like, where is that person at to deal with a presidential candidate? Because what you just did there where you could be like, so when you told people to inject bleach, what did you mean by that during your presidency? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you could actually throw that into the You could take thought, every one of those and just ask them the question. Kyle Clark. Thank you, uh, Angry Bunny. Thank you so much for that. When uh, Kyle Clark is his name, if you guys can go check out Kyle Clark, who who handled and mediated the uh, Colorado, that to me was a stunning performance of how do we get the real nitty gritty about these candidates who want to be in charge and running things and answer to us. But if you're going to be this this pompous narcissist asshole, yeah, I'm not going to just just skate over your presidency that you failed at the end. Yeah. To then take claim for all the things that you're claiming that were great under your watch. 100%. CNN dropped the ball. I think Jake Tapper is is overrated. I think uh, uh, is a Dana. Uh, I think they were not the right people to be there to, to question these two people who want to lead this country. And I want honesty from the media off the bat. Because uh, that to me was just a shit show that they literally wanted to stir the pot and then let Biden defend himself. Out of trying to maneuver through all of the bullshit that was just being thrown out there and not even be checked at all. Well, I mean, I think if you go back and watch, you know, why we were watching it live, I think I say a couple times, you know, just cut his, just cut his mic. And, and so I think we were both feeling the same thing at the time, wishing that they had stepped in and, and fact checked a little more. And, and I was you know, feeling gin and juice. All right. I was feeling good no matter what. So that's, that's the yeah, I won't be drinking again for a I was long taking time. that poison down. That's all it was. Yeah. I still have a headache. Um, but I, I think um, here's the difference the, the reporter that was moderating the Lauren Boebert debate in Colorado does not have the same platform that Jake Tapper has. Number one, no, you know, they're trying to make a name for themselves. So it's a little bit easier for them to do it the way. Now, that being said, I think it should, I think Bring everybody him to this stage, absolutely make a name take, for take that video and take it and use, energy. use that, that format that he did, you know, the way that he checked the candidates 
take that video and send that to everybody that's going to moderate a, a debate anywhere because that is how you should be with all political candidates. It's you call them on the bullshit that's and make them at. answer the question. That's where we're at. You know, now, that with this said, mega movement. that said, I think I'm going to give Jake Tapper just a slight bit of grace because CNN and him going into it were already being attacked by the campaign. So if they did anything to seem like they were siding with Biden, it was going to it wasn't just going to go bad for CNN and Tapper. It was going to go I, bad for Biden, too. I didn't say I didn't say just do it to do it to both. Hold them both accountable. Yeah, but the problem is, is that it, it, you're not how many times would they have stopped Biden for lying? It's not versus it's, how many times they would have stopped. Well, stopped what I'm Trump. saying to you is Kyle Clark. He didn't stop anybody for their lying. It's how he introduced the question. He no, would talk I, about. Yeah. yeah. He would he would introduce and talk about like like you said with with some of the uh, elements, the fact that you put kids in cages, Trump, President mm -hmm. Trump. I mean, all respects. The fact that you put kids in cages during your presidency. How do you feel dealing with the border would be the case now? That right there is asking a question that is like you can't bullshit your way out of this. You well, I mean, put kids in cages. So how would you handle the situation today if you've learned from your past mistakes? Right then and there, you're now holding this person to try to maneuver from. Well, I didn't do that. It's like. Yeah. Okay. You're lying. Like, like now it's on blast. You're but putting here, it on record. But here's the thing, bro. Like, even if they had done that, um, th I think the way that they asked the January 6th question was, was what you're saying. They asked that question in a very direct, specific way that there should have only been one way to answer it. And we watched Trump tap dance around it for a minute and 30 seconds without being able to answer the question. And then they asked him the question again, saying, you know, this was the question. Do you, you know, you have 30 seconds left. Do you, do you want to answer it? Cause you sure as hell didn't just answer it there. Right. So it was like, you know, there was a couple times that he got checked. Um, but was it enough? I agree with you. No, I, I don't think that they, when it came to abortion, they should have led with the fact that there's 13 year old girls now being forced to have children from their captors, from their yeah. relatives, from whatever the case listen, is. They should one, have addressed that right off the bat. And that just, one and this is the America old, you have created. How do yeah. you feel about that now in hindsight? Well, more I mean, the, the way that they would have uh, shit be happy. It wasn't me asking the question because but, I would have been up in both of them in general about how they want to handle this moving forward. But can we can we also highlight how ridiculous it is? how ridiculous of a freaking talking point that it was like, I'm not saying that the 12 year old girl, you know, that, that was attacked by the, the immigrant, you know, whatever the, the freaking talking point was. Wasn't it's horrible. Talking about that one, but yeah, any, any time that right. some, you know, anybody that follows us or watches the show knows that, you know, we don't celebrate somebody being hurt, you know, uh, women being assaulted like right. that, that that's not cool. I don't care where it comes from. And, um, I don't know. It, it's it, just, it just I feel like they dropped the ball on numerous locations within it. And you're right. There were some some sections where they they did kind of do some type of excuse me, some type of follow up to really like hold him to or, you know, he wouldn't even answer the question. He kept he kept going to back. Uh, back well, that was my point. He didn't even answer the questions. That's why I don't understand. I don't understand the political pundits that were losing their minds today. Like how can I'm going to tell you all something. This is why I left the Democratic Party. Today, what you saw happen today is exactly why I left the party, because they are incompetent. You, you can you can get mad at me for saying it all you want. If I Preach. told I've got a 30 minute video telling you what the local Democratic Party did to me and my family personally. So, you know, I'm speaking from freaking experience and to sit there and watch Democratic pundits and even independent pundits sit there and run around with their hair on fire today like the world is ending like there was no comparison between uh, Donald Trump refusing to answer 90, 95 percent of questions and always circling back to you're killing the country, inflation or the border, you right. know, like forgetting the fact that he doesn't understand the tariffs and everything that he implemented are a big part of our inflation issues, uh, ignoring that the inflation issues are being had by, you know, pretty much every country in the world because of covid. So it's not just us. But if you look at us compared to other civil or other comparable countries, our recovery has actually been uh, almost Top better notch. than yeah, Top it's notch. been better than most.
Yeah. So it's just stupid to sit here and say that Joe Biden and his administration aren't delivering. But here's another point I want to make. We aren't just voting for Joe Biden, guys. I want you all to remember that. We are voting for Joe Biden and his administration. And I'm, I've got news for you. Matter of fact, now's the perfect time. Let's go over some of the things that Joe Biden and his successful administration has accomplished in the last three and a half years. The Inflation Reduction Act is generating $1.7 trillion in U.S. investments. The CHIPS Act has created more than 84,000 jobs. Infrastructure and Jobs Act already started more than 40,000 projects. 201 federal judges have been appointed. Uh, bipartisan gun reform and first office of gun violence prevention were created. Forgave $150 billion in student debt for 4 million borrowers. Collecting $500 billion from millionaire and billionaire tax cheats. Unemployment below 4% for the longest stretch in 50 years. Added 700,000 construction jobs. Record level of new small businesses created. Largest ever investment to flight fight climate change to cut pollution 50% by 2030, mm -hmm. issued ruling to cut methane emissions by 80%, preserved more than 24 million acres of land for conservation, renewable en energy surpassed coal for the first time ever, capped prescription drug prices for seniors and insulin at $35 a month with all companies, not just one like Trump did, expanded veterans' health care through the PACT Act, which almost every Republican voted against, expanded overtime for employees making under $55,000 a year, signed the Respect for Marriage Act, approved over-the-counter birth control for the first time, reformed the Electoral Count Act to prevent another January 6th, pardoned thousands of people convicted of marijuana possessions, required cash refunds for canceled flights, connected 10 million households to Wi-Fi, and funded 14,000 mental health professionals in schools. That's right. So when you say, what has Joe Biden done? Send that clip. Send that clip of everything I just wrote to them. That's right. Uh, read to them. And then go send them to the five-minute clip of everything that I pointed out that, Joe Bi or that Donald Trump has done. There is no comparison between these two men. No. Stop playing stupid games. I can't tell you how many people that I actually kind of respected out there uh, on the social media doing their thing. Uh, uh, Vinman. Vinman did a post. I'm like, dude, take this shit down. This is not helping. Yeah. You know, like you guys, th this is the problem with, with liberals and Democrats. While we're all fighting over Joe Biden's old, you know, he stuttered, da 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 you know, he, he can't do it, he, he whatever. You're ignoring all the, the facts that I just said, but you're pushing all this while simultaneously we're watching the GOP and the Republican Party all come together like in a kumbaya moment to vote for a 35-time convicted felon, a rapist, a libel sexual abuser, an accused pedophile, and a dude who wants to fuck his own daughter. That's who the, the religious, God-fearing patriots are going to vote for in 2024. They're going to vote for that guy, and they're going to claim that they believe in God, and they're going to use God, actually, to say that he is their savior and he's going to save our country. Like, you people are so far gone, I can't believe it. You know, and then you look at me and say, I'm the problem. You look at people like Ian and I and you say, we're the problem. We aren't the problem. Like, we actually can read above a fifth grade level. We actually understand the Constitution when we read it, you know? So I mean, I the, got this black job, you know, by, by you know, other, but. Listen, you just peep down over there, okay? I'll let you know when we need you. <laughs> you speak. I hit the button. I hit the button. And it just is, a friendly is, reminder, Ian owns half this shit, so don't, <laughs> don't, I love don't listen you, to us. I love how you chimed in yesterday. You were like, you just had a moment, you are like, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get Mike out the yeah, way. Before, yeah, like, before, yes. be, yeah, before people run with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, is, it is really telling to see the Democratic Party, and this is where I'm disgusted by, um, you know, we always talked about this, Ryan. We're in a fight. Yes, and look 100%. at who's cutting. Look who's cutting and running. You know what I'm saying? This is the part where they go low, we go high. No, get your fucking ass in these streets with us, where we have to be coming together to fight for this nation. And I'm not saying this is rhetoric of like let's attack the Capitol. No, take whatever clips you want from what I'm trying to say right here. I'm telling you that it is the tough road ahead, and either we get back behind. The person that 
We knew it was going to be 80 going into this. Yeah. You're talking about an 80-year-old. I do not expect much on a stage. He has gotten all of that done and it, with with the slimmest majority. Slimmest yes. majority. Good point. On Congress. Okay? Good point. Yeah. And if you go backwards, Trump damn near had the same slim majority, and they got nothing done. Great they got point. nothing really done. Yep. So with the same type of scenario, he got all the things that you just addressed done. And yeah. here we are, and we're going to talk about, well, he doesn't do good on stage. I don't need him to do good on stage. I don't expect him yeah. to do good on stage. But you put him in a room, and you sit him at the table with all these big wigs, and he will get something turned out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to I wanna touch on here what um, Chris here said. Chris says, I'm a truck driver. I see the infrastructure firsthand. Construction is booming. I'm like under Trump. I'm working on a highway project that's union, making more money than I ever did under Trump. And we have just signed a 15 years worth of work in four projects. Oh, wait a minute. Four projects. They claim Trump is better, yet dig nothing for the working class. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you sharing that. Shout and, out, and, and more importantly, I'm glad that you're making more money. That, that's awesome. Hey, man. I'm just glad that you are, you are making it happen. The American yeah, dream. That, and that's the thing, man. We should all, we should all be happy when, when the people around us are doing well. Like, we should be wanting other Americans to do well. We shouldn't be, you know, like, it just seems like we're always playing the gimme, 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 you know, and, and keep everybody away, else away right. from mine instead right. of, you know, and, and not everybody, of course. I mean, there, there are things that happen every day here that, you know, uh, reinvigorates me and, and gives me hope. But, you know, at the same time, we really are fighting a, a, a very dangerous movement at the moment, you know, and I, and I wish that I was, you know, well, exaggerating. Well, I think the Democratic Party is pompous, you know. Yeah, it's it, take off your suit and tie. You need to get, start showing up. And this is the part where we need to stand behind somebody like Joe, who literally has showed up for us four yeah. years ago to step up and bat. And yep. if that wasn't the case, then you should have thought about this four years ago where you set it in motion. You yes. Failed to put Kamala in a position of of, of leadership. Preach. You have not really brought her to the table, especially on the forefront of abortion. Fact. She should be on the forefront. It should be led by a woman yes. who is fighting for the rights of all women. I'm Absolutely. sorry. We have been ran by men this entire time, and look how we have dog walked this country. It is time to literally see real change. And yep. the thing that it gets me the most is we want to cut and run. Where are we going to go? We are now five months from the election. You had all this time to make this decision. Yeah. yeah he's stop 80 playing stupid years games. old. Stop with him being. He's grandpa. Grandpa Joe's. He's there. He's there to bat. I'm sorry. I don't want to work when I'm 80. But you know what? This man does. This yep. man does. So let him do his thing. You know, he's getting I, shit done. And I'm glad you said that because I, I really do wish the, the Democratic Party would have, you know, thought farther down the road than they did. No. You know, because when when I saw Joe Biden win, I'm I'm just being honest here with y'all. I, I was like, OK, perfect. Joe was the perfect guy to beat Trump. You know, he got the reins back for the Democratic Party. Right. Now, let's make sure that we prep whoever the next person's going to be in four years. That's correct. That was that was honestly my thought. And I, I, I bet you one of the Internet sleuths can probably find a video or a post of me saying it. And um, to see how they, like you said, they have not set Kamala up for success in no. any way, shape, or form. No. If anything, I, I, I honestly think they've damaged her brand um, as, as a candidate. They, so, they definitely put her in a handicapped position where she has her arms tied behind her back. She does. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that's fair to her. Um, I think I respect the fact that she has stayed loyal to – you know, Biden and the, and the administration, you know, right. she could have, she could have been out here, you know, voicing some frustrations and probably been fairly justified doing so, but she hasn't. So, you know, you, you, I respect the fact that she's keeping it in house because I'm sure she's frustrated. Um, you know, if some of us, the American people are frustrated watching it from the inside, I can only imagine how frustrated she is. So, um, yeah. Um, there we're stuck with Joe Biden, whether whether we all like it or not. That's why I keep saying this. This 
we can play the what if games. We can, you know, argue back and forth all we want. At the end of the day, when you walk into the voting booth, November 5th, there's going to be two people on that ballot that are viable candidates. And it's going to be either Joe Biden or Donald Trump. So the question at the end of the day, who are you going to vote for? You're going to vote for the 50 year uh, public servant or are you going to vote for the the 34 time convicted felon? who on the stage up there didn't have anything that he could throw at Joe Biden. So he threw his son with public, who was very public about his addiction issues and threw that at him, even though Donald Jr. is a clear addict every time he hits the the play button, um, <laughs> but which actually bite. was confirmed today by bite. Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold did a, a post and basically uh, called him out. Matter of fact, it was so damning. I'll bring that out. That while, I you're looking, while you're looking that up, I want everybody to know I've been uh, in correspondence with some of my Trump's uh, supporting friends or just Republicans, just starch Republicans. And the arguments that are happening in general, I don't argue with with my friends. It's mostly me taking shots and just being funny and <laughs> uh, and usually rubbing their face in a lot of it. Um, and then by that, I mean, I'll randomly wake up in the morning with like them telling me that Eileen Cannon revealed in court today that uh, the FBI lied and all this other stuff. And I go. Oh, that's weird. I'm not seeing that. Like, I, I, why, where are you getting your information from? Like, because you're breaking news to me right now. And they will just literally be like, it's everywhere. Just Google it. And I'm like, OK. And I Google it. And it literally says uh, Eileen Cannon is tossing out uh, J- Trump's argument. And I just respond to them. I just send them that clip. And I just go, look, man, I get that you believe anything that comes out of Trump's lawyer's mouth. I go, but that's not they have to prove that that's their that's their claim. So that that's their argument. And they fail to prove that. And so here is Eileen Cannon, who we all know is just doing her job of stalling this case. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so you don't throw just random shit at me because I'm actually going to wait for information. As you and I always talk about Ryan, I'm not the first to try to break news. I'm there to, I'm here to literally just hit you with actual information as it's coming out. Being that we're taking our time to release that to you. And, and so it's interesting because the same individual waking up to these things and he's telling me that, you know, Joe was lying through most of the uh, uh, a debate. It's it, it really is the upside down world. It's almost like so the person who was lying was Biden and and Trump had stretched the truth is how he worded it. And I go, <laughs> I actually like that you know that phrase stretch the truth because usually I would expect like some more of a Neanderthal type of comment, but I like that you hit me with that. I go, but please elaborate, elaborate more on it. And and then it came out. He goes, I only really listened to like three questions, and I didn't really pay attention. And it's like wow. You came in so strong talking about this. I go, well, I sat there during the entire thing, and I, and I literally fact-checked a lot of things that were happening with Trump. I go, but can you tell me more about black jobs? Like, there's things there where I, I'm trying to get out of them what, what it is about it. But it exists. But please, with uh, Arnold, what do you got? Uh, God, it's so funny, though, because what you just said, somebody, somebody said that to me in a comment. What was it? Shit, usually it'll pull it up right away. Okay, so Tom Arnold. So if you don't know anything about Tom Arnold, uh, he he had a very long um, stretch uh, of drug addiction, and he's he's very very public about it. Tries to help a lot of people. Um, he's so he posted six twenty seven twenty four at seven forty one p.m. Uh, Donald J- uh, Trump Jr. And I only have a part of it. He said, so Don Jr. said, why would Joe Biden refuse to take a drug test? The New York Post published an article about all the drugs that he could legally take to give him an appearance of clarity. Uh, If he wasn't jacked up on drugs, why wouldn't he just take an easy test? So uh, Tom Arnold retweeted that and said, you're lucky, uh, Jr., me and my friends were much more compassionate towards you when you had major substance abuse issues. You don't seem sober now either. Maybe Hunter can help you. You know they know. So, you know, this is a dude that knows him. they know. You know, he knows him personally. He's hung out with him. He sounds like he's done some drugs with him in the past. And he's saying, yeah, you're clearly not sober now. Don't get it twisted. Donald Trump was hanging out with all the celebrities back in the day and was a Democrat up until he ran as a Republican. Yep. Do not get it twisted. All these people know him. Nobody no, has to make I up anything. They were all the parties together. Don't keep reminding people no. that. Uh, it, please. He was a, he was in, <laughs> he was always he was a Republican in, douche. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> hey, it just shows no, you're you not how, wrong. How, you're not wrong. It just shows you how, how the coin is uh, two-sided. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah, just for a flip. sure. It's just a flip. So, it's so um, wild. I want to move on to the Supreme Court. Because we've already spent an hour on this, but before I do, I just 
want to remind people of? That's on the ballot this year. I don't care what anybody thinks. The Supreme Court, seats on the Supreme Court are on the ballot. Four years from now, you better believe there's going to be a seat opening. Who do you want to choose? Sooner than that, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very possible that a seat could open up in this next term. That's correct. It's possible. It's now, I'm not, you know, and again, I'm it's, not saying probable. You know, I'm not going to argue. I'm just saying if, if, if someone's not trying to give it up this, uh, this next election, it's because they're holding out for another Republican. Well, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Where is it, man? Because what I want, I have all the pardons um, that Trump laid out. And it's so damning. Like, it's just so damning. And I think we've already laid out so much. Here it is. So you guys know me. So uh, Kalen, our moderator, who's... Um, Shout out to Kalen. Have a great weekend. Yes, have a great weekend. Um, she... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. I'm starting to lose it. Okay, so <laughs> these are the pardons. And, oh, she. so she is the receipt queen. And, mm. and I, I, t- I asked her like six months ago, I said, can I be the receipt king? And she was like, yeah, sure. So um, these are the receipts that I bring when I go on social media so that I, I'm not just talking out of my butt. You know, I, I show you where I get my information from. You can, you, you know, you can take that information and believe it or not, but that's where I get my information. So these are photos of all the pardons that Trump did. So uh, Roger Stone for obstruction of proceeding, false statements, five counts, witness tampering. Mm. Uh, Paul Manafort uh, gave him uh, five counts of tax fraud, two counts of bank fraud, one count of failing to disclose a hidden foreign bank account, and two counts of conspiracy. Um, Trump, Donald Trump pardoned Steve Bannon in 2021. Bannon was indicted on charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering related to the We Build the Wall Fund. Mm. So he literally pardoned Steve Bannon for stealing money from the the wall fund. But he wants you to think that they care about actually building a border from, wall. From their own constituents. Who from their donated, own constituents. Donated to get that can't, wall built. Can't make that crap up, dude. Um, oh, and here's the... Grifters Donald, are going to grift. Donald Trump pardoned the four Blackwater contractors who opened fire... Uh, in a public square in 2007, killing uh, 14 Iraqi uh, civilians. Mm. Uh, I won't read their names. They're all douchebags. Uh, Donald Trump pardoned General Michael Flynn, who, if you've been paying attention, has been uh, making the rounds, uh, spreading his wild conspiracy theories and uh, domestic terrorist stuff. Uh, uh, Project 2025, if you haven't read up on that, go read up on Project 2025. Yes, sir. Um, that's, That's one of the things that... Michael Flynn has his hands in. Uh, Paul Trump pardoned Paul Polk in 2020. Polk pled guilty to underreporting taxable income. I'm seeing a trend here. You seeing uh-huh. a trend, Ian? Uh huh. Um, George Papadopoulos. Uh, Papadopoulos pled guilty to making false statements to the FBI in December of 2017 during the Mueller investigation. Yeah, that that's a good pardon, isn't it? Uh, Donald Trump pardoned Chris. Christine Christian Saucier, he was given an other than honorable discharge from the Navy for taking photos of classified areas, instruments, and equipment, including the nuclear propulsion system in a military submarine. He, he should have arg- just waited for uh, Mar-a-Lago. He could have got the documents from the bedroom yeah, or ar- from the bathroom. He argued that he should not go to prison because Hillary Clinton didn't over her emails. Let me tell you all something. There's a really big freaking difference of... Uh, some emails on a private server to somebody taking a photo and going into the nuclear propulsion system of a submarine and taking photos of all our equipment and sending it to somebody. Right. Like I can, let me explain, let me explain this to you. I worked on the USS Abraham Lincoln. We were refurbing it in Newport news, Virginia. And during um, a full, I think it was in there for three or four years. And towards the end of the process, one of the things that they do is they take the old fuel rods out of the reactor and they have to swap them. So when they do that, they have guards that show up. So we Mm. came to work one day. And so, again, as you can imagine, a lot of people that work at the shipyard are, you know, either retired veterans or, you know, people that did like four, six years, you know, eight years, some tours, whatever, and then got out. 
but you know, people that did tours and stuff, you just kind of pick up on stuff. So we're walking and we walk through the, the turnstiles and it was a long walk to the boat. It was probably like a half mile walk once you got into the turnstiles mm. and like in the mornings and when you're leaving, it's just like a herd of people. And we're walking in one morning and I had a you know, buddy of mine, we're walking and I look and I look up and I see a dude and I see a gun pointing over an edge and I see a head. And I can look up, I go, that looks a lot like a gun and a, a dude with a sniper rifle. And I, I, like, I literally nudge him, I go, dude, look up. And he goes, what the fuck? And then we look to the left, and on the back of the boat, as we're walking up, they had three snipers set up. They had snipers set up on the building across the way to cover the other, and then they had patrols walking. And we were literally told, do not talk to them. Do not approach them, and if they come up and ask you to do something, fucking do it. Like, it it was, we didn't mess around. So when we got in, they explained to us, uh, they're they're unloading the nuclear rods and and bringing the new ones in. So because they're messing with with secret shit, Mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, nobody, nobody's messing around. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. (laughs) <laughs> to sit there and pardon somebody who is taking photos of right. areas that I know from personal experience that if I walked into when I was doing my job, that they would have shot me yeah. and then dragged my body out later and asked somebody else why I was in there. And then shot them too. <laughs> and then shot them too, depending on the Yeah, answer. you know, like that's right. that's how it would have gone down. So that's, wow. who, that's who Donald Trump's part. Oh, don't worry. We're not done yet. Um, we got Michael Milken. Uh, his crimes were conspiracy, securities fraud, mail fraud, filing false reports with the SEC, assisting a brokerage firm, and violating the net capital requirements. Why do all these guys' names sound like Dick Tracy villains and shit? And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Clint Lawrence. <laughs> That's a good one. Donald Trump pardoned Army First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence, who was turned in by his own men for murdering two Afghans and ordering his troops to shoot unarmed villagers. He had been sentenced to 19 years during his military court martial. So a military court sent this dude to prison. And Donald Trump thought he knew better and pardoned him and got him out of prison for shooting unarmed civilian Afghans. That's who Donald Trump is. But don't worry, we're not done. Uh, Donald Trump pardoned his father, uh, uh, the father of his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who received $2 billion from Saudi Arabia not long after his father received mm-hmm. his pardon. Charles Kushner was convicted of fraud and false statements, 16 counts, retaliating against a witness, victim, statements or entries generally. Trump cited Kushner's charity work since being released from prison as the reason for his clemency. Right. And let's not talk about that building 666, which was completely in debt, billions of dollars in debt, um, and just racking up. Uh, uh, falling further and further in uh, um, uh, uh, real estate out here. Just a terrible, terrible, terrible deal. Donald Trump pardoned Army Lieutenant Michael uh, Behenna for murdering a man in Iraq. He was convicted during a court-martial by a military jury and sentenced to 20 years. But Trump knows better than the military courts, so... Uh, Donald Trump pardoned Stephen Hammond and his son for arson on federal land. I thought they didn't. I didn't. I thought they didn't like when people burn down federal shit. Mm. Oh, I guess they can pardon them when it's a uh, Republican. Their sentence was increased to five years, which caused an arm occupation of a wildlife refuge in response. Mm. Uh, pardon Dinesh D'Souza, who, by the way, is uh, getting sued by so many people because two thousand mules was uh, debunked so badly oh. that the producers had to remove the the movie from all streaming platforms. And not only that, they had to send out a press release saying, basically saying Dinesh D'Souza is a piece of shit and that they were wrong and they're sorry. Wow. Uh, so, but he was pardoned prior to that, uh, who was convicted on campaign contribution fraud. He received five years probation and eight months of community service, working one full day per week. Um, I said at the time, I said 2,000 mule hits different now because <laughs> I posted that. This- Last that's, year, that's, that's wild. Uh, question for you about these. So, how many of these came out during the like final strike of, or you know, the clock of of a lot presidency? of them? Like, wasn't there like a flood of these that yeah. came in? Not all of them. Like, he, he not all, of, but there was yeah. a, a nice handful of people 
mad yeah, dash to I, get I, unfortunately off I don't I don't have it broken down like that but if I remember correctly I think like 70% of them or something like that were done like in his last weeks or last months um there but there after were he knew after he knew he would no but the be kicker what well, here's the thing though usually presidents don't do these until the end of their presidency right and by uh, Biden uh Trump actually uh kind of bucked the system and was issuing pardons halfway through his presidency. Right. When he knew he could strike deals. So, yeah. so yeah. It, that's when the whole, is he selling pardons from the, yeah. from the white house? Yeah. Like that was when that started. So, yep. I remember um, that. Donald Trump pardoned Arizona sheriff, Joe Apreo. Uh, he oh, who was known for, uh, for doing immigrant roundups while leading the department and was uh, convicted of contempt of court. Pardoned Rob Blagojevich. uh, he was, uh, he went to, I think he went to prison. Yeah. He went to prison for selling a Senate seat. Mm. So, uh, yeah, he was pardoned. Oh, there's, here's the next one. You're going to freaking love Donald Trump pardoned disgraced former Detroit mayor Kwame Kilpatrick in 2021. Kilpatrick wasn't set to be released from prison until 2037. Ah, and you want to know what Kwame's doing now down in Texas? He's a minister running for office again. That's why I have trouble with, uh, um, you know, some religion as an organized religion. That's yeah. Why I'm not. I'm not saying you can't be found again. I'm not saying you can't find God. But when you try to start making money off it, mm. I'm good. I'm good. So uh, again, I think if you look at the and and here's another little fact you can Google. So what happens in the process is. Um, the president is given like a list of suggested pardons, people right. who have applied to the process, gone through the process to actually be pardoned. Uh, I guess you'd say the right way. Right. Um, and the office, you know, gets that cuts that limit down to a certain amount and then they give it to the president and they're, you know, they can throw some in and a lot of presidents do, you know, add right. a couple that they want, they want. But they usually select a decent amount from the list of the people that applied. Um, when that list was given to Donald Trump, he selected two out of out of all the people he pardoned. Yeah. Two of them were suggest that went through the process. Everybody else was a personal favor. Yeah. Two. That's what's so grotesque about this whole thing. So grotesque. So, and that was verified. Like I said, you can go Google. That's not just me saying that. Um, so with that, let's move on to um, probably the worst part of the day, which was the Supreme Court decisions that started coming down. Um, the first one I want to start with is uh, the Supreme Court curbs federal agency power overturning the Chevron precedent. The Supreme Court on Friday sharply curtailed the power of federal agencies to regulate vast parts of American life sweeping aside a 40-year-old legal precedent that the government relied on to defend thousands of rules on everything from environment to banking to drugs. The 6-3 opinion along ideological lines was a victory for conservatives who have long said federal agencies wield too much power to impose regulations that burden business and stifle innovation. Legal experts said the decision will lead to a flood of challenges to regulations. And here's, here's what I want to say before Ian jumps in. This is... The personal responsibility argument is that everybody should be left to their own devices and their own personal responsibility. But the one big thing we learned during COVID is that America doesn't really possess personal responsibility. At least half of us don't possess personal responsibility. Like we can't, they can't see past their own nose. And that, and that's the problem. They can't think about anybody else. So we have regulations because businesses started cutting corners that would lead to things like potential sickness and death among Americans and consumers. Like an example, Flint water, the Flint water crisis, the housing market crash, agent orange. How many times have we had food contamination? The reason that we have all these regulations is because we have had the problem in the past and we needed to have oversight. It's just like the military for every rule and regulation you have in the military. There's some dumb, dumb, behind it that hurt themselves or did something stupid that caused that regulation to be put into place. Right. Right. You know, prime example, I'll tell you in the military, we had a book and, and all my, uh, uh, air force guys will know this people, I should say, sorry. 
um, a book about this thick, and you would have to grab it and open it up to open the hanger doors. Now, mind you, to open the hanger doors, it's two buttons, green, red. Not very hard. But what happened this day was that they got the door to almost close, but it stopped. So the, the one airman was, was hitting the green button, you know, to get it to close. And there was somebody on the outside trying to see if there was something in the track stopping it. Now, the doors, when you open the hangar doors, they have a bell. And the bell starts going off like two to five seconds before the door actually starts moving. Mm. So about two or three things happened at, at the same time that made this horrible accident occur. The bell to the doors wasn't working. The airman put his head between the doors to oh, talk no. to, to talk to the guy that was looking at the tracks down the way. And he still had his finger on the button and the door jumped like that. Damn. And literally, like any a lot of people in the Air Force know this story. It was it was gruesome. Like there yeah. So now we have a book this thick that we literally have to open up and go through step by step to make sure that we open the door correctly. And the reason that we have that book is because of that one accident. So that's why we have regulations. <laughs> you know, like like they're literally deregulating things so people like Elon Musk and and you know Amazon and that's and every- exactly what it is. What yeah. we're seeing right now unravel is that they're creating a society where it's the have and have nots. They want to take away the fact and and keep this in mind that this passed uh, months ago that you for civil rights you cannot sue the government because you feel like your rights are being violated for you to actually uh, um, to vote to use your voice. So if you feel like you are being uh, uh, on the chopping block as a community, think about all the gerrymandering that's happening where you're losing your voice more and more. And then now this with the regulations, think about environmental racism that exists. Why is it that we have uh, power plants in certain areas that are affecting the poor and therefore they have no vote to, uh, to how they want to maneuver uh, a cleaner society future? Um, the fact that they're taking away your power to vote, they're taking away your actual uh, uh, protections that are implemented to really help you um, to just live a, a healthy, cleaner life, you know, yeah. life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That's that dream is being removed, much like it is for the housing market for people today. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're when you really think about what's happening and how they're chipping away at a lot of these things and keep in mind, who's to say that they're not going to chip away at civil rights? Yeah, they well, already I mean, have an issue. They are. I know where it's it's on the pipeline, uh, but they already have an issue with uh, uh, interracial marriage. They already have an issue with LGBTQ. They have an issue with clearly women's rights. Like these things are, are you coming concerned down. that they could actually try to strike down loving. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be so fascinating because of uh, Clarence Thomas and Jeannie Thomas? Right. You know what I mean? That, oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. That level, that level of uh, self-hate. Not gonna lie. I definitely jumped. You already know the brother in me was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's in my ear. Um, I was like, I'm going to go. Um, I already she, know uh, she, that dog yeah, is not messing her around. Her hair's up on the back. Come here, girl. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it's okay. I promise you, if Eno does that, it's going to sound cute. Um, yeah. Not threatening. <laughs> yeah, now, that, now when this dog goes. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's, really, it's really telling to see what this, uh, what this Supreme Court. Which, if you start looking at what um, Justice Jackson is actually saying about her coworkers, it's very evident that she's like, this, this is corrupt. The, the conversation, which I'm sure you're about to touch on, that you can now receive gifts and bribes. Like, we are becoming a banana republic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, too many people, too many people on the right don't care. They just don't care. And not only do they not care, but like we can show them court documents. We can show them photos. We can show them articles. We can show them every receipt in the book. And they're still going to go, Donald Trump's the best. But let me ask you this. If Supreme Court is rolling back what you can receive as gifts, so is Senator Bob Mendez over here in Jersey who has uh, Egyptian gold bars in his pockets, is that now fine? Fair question. Because this is where we're heading. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we're literally heading. If this is if this is the road you're gonna have, you're gonna have more uh, Harlan Crows buying up. Yep. You know, the the conversation about uh, who just supported Trump. 
everybody was talking about the significance of Trump's fundraising being 50 million in May. That wasn't contributions by a whole bunch of people. That was not small donors. No. That was one individual who is a billionaire who wants what Trump has to offer, which is the tax cuts. Yep. Who wants what this society is going to offer, this administration, which is going to be less of the red tape of holding him accountable. Yeah. So he can't create any situation where it's, it's going to affect us. He would not be held accountable. I don't know how I feel so much about this Purdue. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, what's the comment? I love how Mugga shows up and this is because right wing shows up. So that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got you, Rochelle. Hate, baby. No. Hate. Put it on blast. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm thinking so much about how this is going to affect the next generation. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to throw this up there. Uh, VM Palmer said, uh, Ryan, my dad was a retired MCPO and was on a nuclear sub for most of his service. He would have been appalled by what's going on. Exactly. I think most rational people see what's happening and going, okay, like this, this is yeah. enough. Like yeah. at the, at the end of the day, America is bigger than one man and it's bigger than one movement. It's, it's bigger than Trump. It's bigger than MAGA. And we need to remember that come November. You know, yeah. we aren't worshiping Joe Biden. Like I said, you see a lot of us out here. We're like, yeah, the first couple of questions were rough. It wasn't his best night. Not saying, not saying he did fantastic, but it's still, there's still no comparison between the two. Like Trump couldn't answer a question. He just went around and around talking in his normal circles. You know why Joe Biden, you know, yeah, he stuttered and yeah, he, you know, he kind of lost it for a few uh, moments there, but he was still drilling Trump with right, right hooks, man. Like he was still making him look stupid. So it's like, how is Trump walking around with his chest, you know, puffed out today, knowing that an 80 year old, you know, man that he claims has dementia, Held him. you know, was still able to, you know, slap him around a little bit last night, Yeah, yeah. you know, and he was off, like he was off and he was still slapping <laughs> Trump around. <laughs> That's what's actually, and, and I give it to this Trump supporter. He was like, you know what? I give him both a F. He goes, it's ridiculous that Trump couldn't have finished that off. And I'm like, that's that fair. just shows you, though. That shows you. And I was, I was like, but I, I, I appreciate your honesty. Yep. You're holding, you're holding Trump upon, uh, accountable. You know, because I, I think that I think most Americans probably watched last night and went, I, honestly, the, is this I the best we could do? <laughs> that's kind of you know nobody said those words, but it was just kind of like everybody was left with the the wind taken out of our sails. Yeah. I think you know it didn't matter what side you were on. But like you said, it felt like both sides lost. Yeah. And and that walking Americans walking away from presidential debate without, you know, without cheering for one or the other, because usually like when Obama got done with his debates, he had one bad debate. I remember he had one bad debate right. and then he came back the next debate and freaking absolutely wiped, wiped the floor with him. Yeah. So, you know, Obama's had a bad debate. I remember it. You can go back and look. You can go um, see Obama's uh, social media. He talks about it. He, Did he? he just he just he went out there in defense of Joe. He goes, look, man, we've all had one. I know. Exactly. I remember it. I remember yeah. it because I remember go. watching it and going, oh, crap. Like having that feeling of, you know, he we knew he was off. Like, yeah. I, you know, everybody knew he was off, but it was just kind of like he was still off. It was a presidential debate. You know, like people are going to take that you know, when they go into a voting booth. It's just reality. Right. right. You know, and, and Obama knows that. And Biden knows that, and that's why they're playing catch up today, and that's why it's so discouraging to see, you know, uh, political pundits, but more specifically, uh, left wing and Democratic political pundits, you know, turning their not just criticizing. Like I'm, I'm fine you know, with some. Salacious. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm cool like... with a little cri criti criticizing. There was a yeah. few things that were would be fair criticism to give to Joe today. I'm not saying that, but the way that they are literally just like turning their back on them and, and making yeah. it sound like that, you know, the world is ending. Yeah. Very disappointing uh, to see that today. Very disappointing. Yeah. Um, so, but moving on to the next disappointing thing from today, um, the Supreme court rule. This show is so depressing. It, 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 <laughs> hell yeah. Need By the way, guys, like I'm subscribe done. and hit the notifications. I promise you not every show is this thick with all this information. I haven't even thought of but, what my positive is yet, by the way. <laughs> We have none. All right. Being sober. <laughs> no, we got to come up with something. Positive. No, we got to come up with something. Don't worry about it. 
But yeah, um, no, but like, subscribe, hit the notifications. Ryan and I are here every Fridays, and uh, we're breaking down the hot mess so we can uh, bring some jokes to, to your week yeah, uh, we so we can go through this news together. But we always encourage you, please look it up. Hold us accountable right into the group chat. Let us know what you yes. think. We want to hear from you guys. And I love that you said that, man. Like, please hold us accountable. Like, if, if we're wrong about something, tell us. Like, I don't – granted, it's a little bit about the approach, but I actually appreciate constructive criticism. You know, like like a uh, show or two ago when you called me up and said, you know, you called me out on something and said, hey, you know, just do better. And it's like that to me is constructive criticism. But, you know, th- there's a big difference between that and, and I think what's happening right now. You know, there's not that's not constructive criticism for Joe. That's like you said, that's for salacious clicks and yeah. and, and all that. Yeah. And that's all it is. And that's, that's like I said, it's just disappointing. But um Going back to the Supreme Court, they ruled uh, in favor of a January 6th rioter who was challenging the, his obstruction charge. The Supreme Court on Friday ruled in favor of a former police officer who was seeking to throw out an obstruction charge for joining the Capitol riot on January 6, 2021. The justices, in a 6-3 vote on uh, non-ideological lines, handed a win to defendant Joseph Fisher, who is among hundreds of January 6th defendants, including former President Donald Trump, who have been charged with obstructing an official proceeding over the effort to prevent Congress's certification of President Joe Biden's election victory. The court concluded that the law, enacted in 2002 as part of the uh, Sarbanes-Oxley Act after the Enron accounting scandal, was only intended to apply to more limited circumstances involving forms of evidence tampering, not the much broader array of situations that prosecutors have claimed it covered. The provision targets anyone who obstructs, influence, or impedes any official proceeding or attempts to do so but the court determined that its scope is limited by a preceding sentence in the statute referring to altering or destroying records. So basically what the court said is that because they didn't destroy any records, that that, that law didn't apply. So now everybody that they were using this particular legal precedent to go after will now basically have the charges dropped, thanks to the Supreme Court. So I guess we're just going to let domestic terrorism, you know, fucking take over here in the United States. This is where we have to have uh, scholars who are on their P's and Q's where they're going to they have to predict these kind of moves. This is why I'm really rooting for someone like Kendrick Lamar to be in office where he can predict Dude. all of this. <laughs> I hate just the way general. you walk, the way you talk. <laughs> I predict your angles. You know what I'm saying? We need we need people who are who are not who who really, like you said, can see past their nose, but can can see that this is this is what they're going to be up against, right? Yeah. Um, because the goalpost is always going to be pushed back further and further. Again, look at what's happening with Trump's trial cases, the ones that actually really do matter, the one where we do want to see him for J6. We want to see him in D.C. face uh, face his peers. Yeah. That case is being pushed around because, and we're still waiting. We're waiting not only 60 days from the, the actual hearing that they had at the Supreme Court, but we're waiting since last December when we were at, when, when Jack Smith asked for this to be expedited and to be put on the table. Let's yep. go. Let's get to the point. Let's just get this going. And yep. no, they have told the Americans, uh, the people of America, that you guys can take a back seat and that we will decide what's right for America. Yeah, for sure. And all they're doing is making this more political than it needs to be. Hundred percent. The yeah, it feels like Supreme Court's really dipping in politics lately. Um, so the last one we're going to talk about, and there's been a couple other Supreme Court rulings that were kind of crappy. These were just the three that stuck out to me. Yeah. Uh, the Supreme Court now says that cities can punish uh, the unhoused for sleeping in public places. In its biggest decision on homelessness in decades, the U.S. Supreme Court today ruled that cities can ban people from sleeping and camping in public places. The justices, in a 6-3 decision along ideological lines, overturned lower court rulings that deemed it cruel and unusual under the Eighth Amendment to punish people for sleeping outside if they had nowhere else to go. Writing for the majority, Justice Gurish said, Homelessness is complex. It causes, its causes are many. But he said federal judges do not have any special competence to decide how cities should deal with this. In a dissent, Justice Sotomayor said the decision focused only on the needs of cities, but not the most vulnerable of us. 
She said, sleep is a biological necessity, but this decision leaves a homeless person with an impossible choice, either stay awake or be arrested. And I just wanted to say real quick, the thing that really sticks out to me, when the writer of the majority says that the issue is complex, but that they they do not have the uh, wherewithal to decide that. They don't have any special competence to decide what happens with this. So, but you have a special competence to decide what women do with their own body. You guys overrule what doctors have told you, and you overrule what the people that actually went to medical school do. So the judges are capable of telling women what to do with their bodies and telling them they can't get birth control. But they have a problem with making it so that, you know, homeless people have a place to sleep. The pro-life party, everybody. It's it's interesting to me because if you think about the prison system, you think about how they're trying to fill the jails. They're, they're and not why, letting... Ian? Because they're for-profit prisons. In yeah. here in Arizona, they passed a law in 2020 that turned, I think, 70 or 80% of our prisons in Arizona to for-profit prisons. And so what? for them to be profitable, guess what you have to do? Put some butts in those seats. And what's one of the best ways to do it? Fucking just put everybody that's homeless, put them in jail. Well, look at what you said early in the show, how you said that they were releasing um, those with marijuana charges. And so now all you're seeing is a swipe of the switch, uh, a, a swapping of you're taking out people who've served their time, done these things that they should never have been in there. But now you're going to go after the weakest of us. And I'm not saying that someone who's homeless is weak. It's just they're the most vulnerable. Most, I think that's a better word. The most vulnerable. When you, when you, are, when you do not have a roof over your head, you do not have a, a situation where you are An income. able to, to get into the system, right? Yep. Um, one thing that's interesting about New York is that I've noticed they've put charging stations, free charging stations, so people who are uh, homeless can actually charge their phones. Oh, that's cool. And it's really interesting to me to see that level of, of um, planning, urban planning, it's yeah. not just for homeless. It's not. But it's it's an idea where you're thinking to yourself, like, if you go home, you're charging your phone at home, you know. Yeah. But if you're out on the street and you just happen to have a uh, um, a specific – I'm not saying they have a smartphone, but, you know, a, a, a some type yeah. of phone. Um, because these people have families. These people have lives. Uh, th- th- some of the worst situations have happened. It's mental health. It's a number of things. It could be well, an addiction. It's a number of things. It yeah. is com- it's so complex. But the reality is – you're 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 just removing the question about being a human being mm. just caring for like you know as much as they push for being this you know this this christian nation that we are mm. they're not acting very christian no sir they're not taking the homeless in they're not they're not helping with planning uh, uh where they can house any of the, uh, anybody they're not looking at what kind of programs they can get to the root of this issue they're just looking at how they can create more uh tension Yep. And and then at the same time, cast away people. Yeah. And if they're going to start throwing them in prison, you already see what the plan is. It's the haves and the have-nots. Yep. It's becoming more and more clear because if they were really trying to get to the root of this issue, you would make housing more affordable. Yeah. For I'll go everyone. A, I'll, I'll go a step further. If we were serious about helping people, we would start repurposing all these empty buildings. All the empty buildings that are, that are empty. So many. That are empty so because of society evolving, not as many people having to actually go into an office to accomplish their job every day, yep. more people doing teleworking, more people working for themselves. Um, and we're seeing, you know, properties that are abandoned and they're literally going to crap. And instead of, I'm, instead of finding something, you know, useful to do with them or purposeful to do with them, right. we're just going to let them sit there and deteriorate until either, you know, you tear it down and sell the land you know, or, or whatever the plan is. But, yeah. you know, we don't we don't want to do anything like actually help people. Right. I love Angry Bunny. She's she's uh, she's on point. She's uh, oh, she's the best. Having, oh, yeah. Yeah. Christians aren't Christianing. <laughs> so, you know, math no. ain't math and Christians are Christianing. So um, the uh, I'm glad that you touched on that because there's so many uh, buildings here that are literally not being filled to capacity at all. Yep. This is New York City we're talking about. Um, there's a building every five seconds, right? It's, yeah. it's, we're we're surrounded by the concrete steel uh, game here, and when you look at when you're looking at this, 
Um, I've heard the conversations about, you know, the cost effect of what it would take to, to revitalize some of these buildings. You know, the hustle that COVID showed us that, the, you know, we don't need to do this nine to five mm-hmm. of giving corporations three extra hours of our life a day, the two hour commute to get there, uh, that, you know, the hour commute back or uh, extra two hours back, whatever the case is, yep. um, that adds up. And people are not taking promotions because they're like, I'd rather just stay at home and work because I'm getting so much time back. And you can never pay me, compensate me for my time. Exactly. Time is money. And when we realize that, that you will never get that time back. Dude, that's it, it. It's one of the our last... generation has woken up to it, and we're, we realized due to COVID. Oh, absolutely. What is more important? Look, one of the, one of the last things my dad said was that when it when it was time, when his time was up, it, he it, the amount of money he had, the house, the cars, he said none of that matters. He's like, what mattered the most to me, he goes, was the pictures, the videos, you know, the memories that yeah. we had. You know, he, he really said, he goes, take photos, take videos. He goes, that's the stuff that you're going to care about, you know, the last the last few months or whatever. Absolutely. And, yep. and, and yeah, I just, I, I really do carry that around with me because it's like, you know, I I kind of fell into this on accident. You know, I, I had a couple surgeries back to back and it was like, I can't do what I was doing anymore. Mm-hmm. So now I have to figure something else out. And I just kind of, like, I literally just kind of fell into this. And, um, but like you said, now that I see what I have been able to build, uh, you know, and factoring in my quality of life, meaning I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to travel all the time. I have to pay a crap ton for gas every month. Right. And, but most importantly, my kids see me every day. You know, I may be in the office some days and be busy, but they know I'm in the house. Right. They, you know, they know all they got to do is come, you know, swing the door open and I'm right, I'm right here. Dad's right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so, but it's a privilege. It's, yes. it's, it's not everybody has that, that, that ability. And I know how fortunate that, that both Jen and I, you know, Jen did 21 years and retired and she's like, I want to be home with the kids. Yeah. You know, she's like, I deployed, you know, left my family for months at a time. She's like, I don't, I don't have to do that anymore. Right. You know, so she's like, I'm not going to. And it, it's like, why for us, we got to the point too, where it's like, we have the ability to stay home and raise our kids. Why are we going to have some, like pay somebody else to raise them? You know, why are we going to send them to have somebody else? Right. No, we, we don't need to do that. Right. You know, there's, there's so many people that need that, that need to send their kid to school that need to do those things because that's what society has created. And we're on the polar opposite here in the city. My wife and I, we work, we have our kid dropped off at 7 a.m. And I don't pick them up until five something, almost six some days yep. because the lives that we have in this city, the hustle bustle, it's, it's a always. reality and it's, and it costs an arm and a leg. And it, and you think about it, it's like if one of us didn't work and we were here, it'd be like, okay, you would have the kids, you would do all these things. Now there's yep. granted, there is some amazing things that are happening with daycares here in New York city where they have access to all these things. So, you know, look, the, this, this, the big apple is their backyard, right? Oh yeah. Um, but it's access to all this stuff. Um, and the cost. But the cost is is substantial. It's, yeah. It is up there. But it's you know it's one of those things where I think about it. Like if I take my son uh, walking the dog around you know the block, and it's you, you know Eno's so tiny, it's literally just one block. Yeah, and we come back. He's done. But the excitement is with little man where he's just like, "Yay, we did it!" And it's like this amazing moment of walking into the the building. Yeah. What's funny is I dropped him off at school today, and I walked two miles to come back because I just felt like. A walk was necessary. Yeah. Um, I go through these modes. I listen to music. I like to just take in the scenery of everything around me, the environment, and I'll I'll be processing a track that I'm working on, um, a, a something new that's coming out. And so as I'm walking home, I get to my door, and all that plays in my head is Little Man's voice saying, "Yay, we did it!" And I just I just had a smile on my face as I I walked back in the door, and I was like, "It's just it's going to live with me rent free in the best way possible." Yeah. Absolutely. It is. It's those little things, man. Those yeah, little that. things. So speaking of, so, more. What's, uh, so what's your positive for the week, brother? Number of things. So I'm, I'm technically on vacation, even though I worked majority of my vacation. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a staycation. Um, today is the actual anniversary of my father passing a year ago. Uh, my aunt passed a couple, uh, a number of years ago, but just a day or two These ago. You're supposed to be positives, bro. 
Oh no no, <laughs> it's, 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 it is it okay. is man, but man. Hey, you got to celebrate the life of somebody, right? True. So this, you know, this is you're positive. right. You're right. In, in in my community, in my my space, we celebrate the life up, right? Yep. And so the positive is is, and I sent you photos of this because I already started it, but uh, uh, I went kayaking um, around Governor's Island, and I, I took my time because I'm really working up to this. Uh, so I'm just pacing myself. But I went around Governor's Island. It was very busy out there uh, um, in the harbor. And so uh, uh, put in the work, got around, and uh, I sent you pictures of like, okay, I'm out here yeah. in this river doing my thing. And uh, and so I was very physical on, what was it? That's, today is Friday. So Wednesday. Wednesday I was kayaking. Yesterday, Thursday, uh, before seeing you, I did my uh, anniversary ride, which was 28 miles on the bike to Coney Island to get two beers and two hot dogs. Nice. It is my favorite thing to do. I leave in my area of Brooklyn. I head to Coney Island. Uh, it's an amazing uh, uh, road trip. And uh, and so I got out there, got the beers. It, apparently, it was like an 80-something degree day. It was like one of the, one of the hottest days that we're having right now. And uh, my wife is like, why are you insane? Why are you, why are you biking <laughs> on the hot days? Like, what is wrong with you? And I'm just like, look, man, it was for the beer and we're, the hot we're dogs. We're tough. We're, we're not at all. Not at all. <laughs> my, my bunions hurt. So all I thought was I need a new seat on my bike. That's all I thought. I need a new seat. I need a new seat. I go, this yep. seat is done. The, the gift for myself this year is get a new bike seat. That is the, the reality. And uh, uh, But I got back. I got back. And, uh, and it's funny because I go, why am I doing all this crazy shit? I got to see Ryan tonight. I go, why am I trying to kill myself right now? So all this is going on in my head. I had to be like, awakened from nine to like whenever, 11. Right? Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was like, all right. So I made it. I definitely made a couple. Yeah, it was 11 your night. time, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, was late. We started at nine, nine to 11. And I was like, all right. So I had some coffee. Um, and then today I was like, okay, I'm going to go work out. And I go, why am I trying to kill myself for this weekend? Like we still have the whole weekend, yeah, whole weekend. to get through. And so, but, uh, uh, oh, and that was the other thing. I took little man to the pool because the red hook pool opened up. Oh, and cool. so what uh so this was yesterday so biked 28 miles picked up a little man from school got him back and then i immediately was like all right here's the game plan pool's open we got to get you to the pool because this is game time now baby we've been waiting now we've been talking about the pool this entire time and he loves 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 the pool so the whole game point uh the game plan was get him to the pool and i'm telling you purple lipped sitting there <laughs> shivering my man telling me <laughs> more more pool more pool and like, i'm like no, no, no more towel. i go we're done brother we're done <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we're done I'm, I'm calling it you're done you know i felt like uh iron man looking at spider-man and how uh, dominic is man He'll like sit, sit there, down kid lips sit blue down. i want to go you're back in mm -mm. no nah, i'm making the call you're done and i remember being that kid i remember it vividly like <laughs> yes no i can i can keep going Sit down. So you're when done. your lips are purple, you're about 30 seconds from hypothermia. Come here. Oh, it's, it's done. I go, I'm not explaining this to your mother. I'm not right? having this conversation. Like, you're done. We're, we're leaving. Yeah, we're not doing this. And little man literally was just sitting there in the towel like, we, are we coming back? And I'm like, we got all weekend, yeah, my man. We'll we got all weekend. Like, we're just getting started. We have a whole summer. So, so this is my positive. So all this stuff care. happening, all these waves of, of the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. You know, rocking with you last night was really great. It was really yeah, nice to get an extra show in with you. And, uh, uh, but you know, it's all positive, man. It's all good. Awesome. So, and the two beers, like, as I was saying to you, those are for the people who, uh, who, who have not made it with us to this point in the journey, uh, who, who we've lost over the years. Uh, but it's in memory of them and it's always in a good, a good faith. So it was, nice. it was a lovely, 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 uh, staycation. Awesome. So, mm. oh, and our new song dropped. Well, that was going to be my positive. So shut oh! up. Oh, then you take it. Cause, so, cause this is special. This one's special. So, um, Ian's been sending me um, some some of a new music, and he's got the album uh, cover art. Artwork, yeah. Yeah, the artwork, as you can see, has my little face there, oh, my big ass face, I should and say. And I'm I'm rocking the Kumo D's right next to you. But tell them, but tell them why we're at the science, why we're at the experiment table. So I I text you, uh, and I said, hey, you know, all respect. Do you mind if I use your name and likeness, like your image, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and which I think is, is the number one thing as any artist to just reach out to somebody. And I said, I've been working on some music and I want to pay homage to you. And I think the best way I could do it is uh, to take us back to science class, how we first met. Yep. And I said, you know, I'm working on something. You know, do I have your blessing? If I don't, I'll reconfigure whatever, but I still may keep the name. And uh, when I did this and I sent it to you and I was like, we'll see what you say. And you straight up, you were like, that's dope. 
Yeah, I like and I was it. like, all right, my man. I go, all right. The I'm licensing bills in the mail, though, just so no, you know. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, this black job don't pay enough, so I'm going to have to figure that out, all right? I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> but uh, it was dope. It was dope to hit you up with it and be like, you know, and I really thought about that. I go, how much, how much music has Ryan's face on it? And I go, you know, you see this says part one. Yeah. So when I was walking home today, I'm already listening to part two and I'm making the tweaks and everything that I need to make. And uh, it's really interesting uh, because this one is a music bed for you. Uh, it's me paying homage to you. Thank you for everything and, and for getting me jump started back into it. And uh, and again, for this experience, because I'm having a lot of fun with you. I'm having a blast, man. But it, more importantly, I'm, I'm just proud to see you putting so much music out. And, and even in a short period of time, it was funny. Because we were talking, it was, it was your last night when we got off for the other day. And I said something like, you know, pretty soon you're going to have to put a whole, you're going to have enough to put a whole album together. And as you guys can see here, he's already got, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. six. He's already got six tracks. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you start getting into 10, 12, 15, you got a full LP. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, dude, it's just really freaking awesome to see you putting music out again. Um, and, and just taking advantage of how much easier it is now to, you know, to self-produce and put your own music out without a ton of overhead. Um, oh, so, it's every, it's, and it's, what's wild about this is this specific project is just my cell phone. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's what I, I just, I'm trying to hit home for everybody from the artwork to actually creating the music. Uh, and then also just distribution. Everything is all done on my cell phone. Yep. This is the whole point of this project that I'm doing for the next year. Isn't it crazy that we can like run a whole business from this right here? That's it. That's literally it. It's and crazy. It, when you think about who's like wasting time and you're like, and I think about like, you know, time, how it is wasted. I'm like, yep. this is what you can be doing. I'm always uh, doing something like, you know, if I'm, if I'm down for a minute, I know yeah. that I can, there's something that I can be doing on my phone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and the biggest thing with this is that I've been doing this and I already, as I told you, I already have a number of songs that I'm sitting on. That yeah. I've not released. It's just more so of not just doing this massive dump of everything. And there's there's meaning to it. Yeah. Science Part One was dope to release, and then hit you up and be like, "Yo, my man, the song's already out," and just texting you it that it's out there, and then showing you the artwork for Science Part Two, that is in the works, and you giving the green light for that. And you're like, Ian, that one's dope. And yeah. I'm like, I can't wait to release that song. So that's it. That that'll be dropped randomly at some point. But right now, guys, check it out. Check out Science Part One. It's more of a music bed for uh, for Ryan. For his for his videos and what he's doing, uh, and it's always so just uh, to extend the olive branch for him to uh, to keep doing his thing. So let's let's see if it works. Can you hear it? Oh, I can hear it. Told you I'd figure it out. So, all right, guys, this is going to be the end of our show. That is Ian's music playing in the background. Go check it out on Spotify under Ian Sherman. Thank you for hanging out with us again for another night of Hold the Mic. We love you. We appreciate you. We know we don't have a platform without you, and we don't take you for granted. That being said, I leave you as I always do with much love. Keep fighting. Stay safe out there. And remember, whatever you do, make sure you get your ass out and vote.